Thank you for tuning in. This demo is a brief video introduction to configuring role-based access control through App Center. App Center is the web-based user console for NaviCloud, Navisite's managed cloud services platform. The NaviCloud platform's role-based access control, generally referred to by its acronym RBAC, allows for very granular control over which users or groups of users can manipulate your cloud objects within App Center. It's built to meet exacting regulatory requirements in a customized manner, enabling you to map an approval framework to your existing workflows. So let's build an RBAC scheme that selectively enables some App Center users and restricts other App Center users in carrying out operations on cloud objects. So we can get started. You create and uh, modify RBAC configuration through App Center's Admin tab. The Admin tab consists of four configuration screens, Approvers, Workflow, Users, and Policy. You configure RBAC by working through the screen from left to right and then within each screen from top to bottom. As the configuration proceeds, the screens use material defined in previous steps. First looking at approvers. An approver is not an individual user. Rather, an approver is a permission construct. For example, technical approval, finance approval, legal approval. So I'll create technical and financial approvers. So from the approver screen, click Add. and our approver constructs in place. Next we go to authorization templates. An authorization template is a named matrix that associates actions you can perform in App Center, for example, powering up and down VMs, creating firewalls, etc., with approver permission constructs. I'll create three templates server admin will have technical approval for all VM functions. Finance admin will have financial approval. And all powerful will have both technical and finance approval. So on the approver's authorization template screen, new template. Server admin. Finance Admin, and All Power. And in the matrix, I set up Server Admin to have technical approval for all VM functions, and save. I set up Finance Admin to have financial approval for all VM functions and save. And I set up All Powerful to have both technical and financial approval and save. So that's the Approvers screen. So next we're looking at the Workflow screen. Uh, back on the Approvers screen, we built configuration that granted an ability to approve. And here in the Workflow screen, we define what approvals are actually required and in what order. A workflow is a named set of approvers specified in the order in which their approvals are required. So we will create a workflow for VMs requiring technical approval first, followed by financial approval. And we'll call it VM workflow. New workflow. And then we add 
approvers. Technical approval. Financial approval. And then we save. Next we do requirement templates. Requirement template is a matrix of actions that may be taken on a cloud object in a specified required order of approval. So we will create a matrix that requires technical approval for all actions and financial approval for only those actions likely to incur cost, such as clone, power on a VM, etc. We'll call that RBAC managed VM. Create a new and we'll reference our workflow that we just created. So we're going to require technical approval for all actions, financial approval for say clone and power on. And we save. So now we've configured the approvers and the workflow. And we move on to users. Users are specified by name and email address. Now because user ID configuration initiates for each user a, a credentials email and because each user's initial login requires a password update, I've already created the users before starting this demo video. And here they are. We have the development engineer, the production engineer, the CEO, the CFO, and the CTO. Roles are named entities, each of which has a defined authorization template. Um, roles function as a layer wrapped around authorization templates. We'll show that we can share the server admin authorization template that we created earlier um, between a dev server admin role and a prod server admin role. And we also create an all server admin role. So we'll show that roles can be used both to segregate authority and to provide a more umbrella type of coverage. We'll create five roles. So we use the new role button. All server admin. Finance. And all powerful. And with user roles in place, we're going to move on. We're going to skip visibility for a moment and move on to membership. User membership is the assignment of users to roles. So here we associate individual people from the list of users we created with roles. The screen is role centric so we go through each role we've defined previously and we link the appropriate users. So with the dev server admin role we associate the dev engineer. with the prod server admin role. The prod engineer. With the all server admin role. It's going to be filled by the CTO. The finance role would be filled by the CFO.
And in the all-powerful role, we add the company founder, the CEO. So with users, roles, and membership defined, I want to go back to this visibility screen. This is all about masking from view certain portions of the user interface. We'll restrict display of this network tab to the CFO. Uh, you could define any number of UI visibility restrictions. We add a group to which to apply the uh, restriction, so we'll call the group no network. We add user CFO to the no network group. And then we use the block section part to define what section we're going to uh, restrict access to. Network tab, block entire network section. So once again, continuing left to right, top to bottom. Finally, for our RBAC configuration, we are at the policy screen. When creating policy, you are specifying the workflow requirement template to apply, and optionally, the set of roles which should be allowed to approve. If no roles are specified, then anyone who has the correct authorization can execute or approve. But if roles are specified, then only people associated with that role may do so. This is how RBAC enables you to share authorization templates yet still exert granular control over who can approve actions on which objects. So first we configure the policy for development servers. We add a policy, dev VM policy. And with that policy added, we now associate roles with it. And next, we're going to configure our policy for production servers. So we're going to add the policy, prod VM policy. And then we're going to add the roles. We're going to add roles for prod server admin, all server admin, finance, and all powerful. And then finally for our RBAC configuration, policy membership. Policy membership associates policy with objects in your cloud environment. So for this demo, it's where we specify which policies apply to which VMs. Uh, by default, a VM has no policy associated with it. For this demo, servers named WebDev, WebProd, and WebAnon exist as part of the cloud configuration. We will put the development policy on WebDev, the production policy on WebProd, and we'll leave WebAnon without policy. So we go to DevVM policy, we add object. And we find our web dev. Object add. We go to the production policy. We add object. We find our web prod. And add. And with that, our RBAC configuration is in place. So we've done the configuration time part of the uh, demo, and now we'll split into the uh, runtime RBAC application of that configuration.